Chapter 30. The Road to Nowhere. Cat said nothing. I said nothing. His grip relaxed. He took a step back. He wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. You followed me, didn't you? You followed me from here, from the scooter show. Cat nodded. That missing kid, the one on the news, is that who you're looking for? Yes, said Cat. He's not just some kid. He's our cousin, Salem. Why do you think I had anything to do with it? Because it was right after you gave us that ticket. Salem went up the London Eye, but he never came down again. The strange man looked at us with one side of his lip up, the other down. His nose scrunched up, his eyebrows bumped together. Crazy kids, he said, but he wasn't looking at us. He had his eyes raised, upwards as if we were floating above him in the air. We're not crazy, Cat said. He looked down again and gave a strange kind of smile. This cousin of yours, he went up the eye and never came down, you say. Yes. Kids don't just vanish into thin air. Cat sighed. That's what the police said. The man's eyes shifted round from her face to mine. It's serious, Cat said. The police are looking for him and now it's all over the TV. I don't know anything about it. I've told you before. Did you really just buy a ticket and not decide to use it? The man looked around and backed away. It wasn't exactly like that, he said. A bus crammed with passengers had pulled at the nearby stop. A woman with a buggy struggled to get on. The driver stared at her with his lips turned down. The strange man glanced at the bus, then looked at us. It was the bird, he said, his words speeding up. The bus revved up. The wheels of the buggy spun as the woman seesawed onto the platform. My hand was shaking itself out. This bird in the queue, that's who I got the ticket from. A bird, I said, thinking of crows and pigeons. A dark-haired chick. Nobody I knew. I was just passing. She called me over and said how her boyfriend hadn't shown up and she didn't want to waste a ticket, but she didn't want to lose her boarding slot either. So she asked me to go over and give it to you. Why us? said Cat. The man shrugged. Dunno. You were kids right at the back of the queue, I guess. She took pity on you. Suddenly, he dashed over to the bus just before the dive driver shut the doors. It's her you need to talk to, not me. If you can't find her... Then he gave me a strange laugh. Wait! screamed Cat. Don't go! Wait! She ran after him, but the cross-looking driver shook his head and shouted, Fill up! and shut the doors in her face. The strange man raised his palms upwards as well as his hands, and the bus jerked forward and gathered speed down the high street. How? said Cat. Hmm, I said. Shut up, Cat shouted. The bus, along with the strange man, disappeared under a bridge. Cat clenched her fists and banged them on her thighs like she was a boxer fighting herself. Then she kicked a coat can off the pavement into the gutter. The road to nowhere, she said in a voice so loud that the passers by stared at us. One great big waste of time. On the word time, she crushed her boot down the coat can. Road to nowhere. The boot stamped up and down. The coat can went flat, pancake flat. Nowhere. She burst into tears. And which way's the tube? I've forgotten. Chapter 31. Tornado touchdown time. Somehow, Cat found the way back to the tube. She stomped up the high street with me trying to keep up with my hand flapping. And then she asked directions from a man who was painting a railing. And he pointed a finger and she stomped on acted as if I wasn't there, and I kept up after her until we got to the tube. We travelled the long way home in silence. Then we walked back up the main road into the street and still said nothing, but she let me walk beside her now, and her lips were turned down, which meant she was sad, more than angry. Outside her house she stopped and said, We're for it, Ted. Our hair isn't even wet. I touched my hair, confused. Then I remembered we were supposed to have gone swimming. Maybe we can just sneak in? Cat whispered. She got our... She got out her key and was about to put it in the lock when the door flew open. Mum stood in front of us, bearing her away. Her hair was messy and her eyes were as wide as volcanoes craters. She dangled our swimming gear before her eyes. Cat's bikini, two sets of goggles, my trunks. She spluttered, dropped the lock, hugged us, cuffed Cat round the ear and screeched, You disobedient, lying, cheeky chit. And as for you, Ted, I'm shocked. I don't know what you've got into, writing this lie about going swimming. I've been worried witless. I've... Cat walked past her with her hands over her ear. Don't you swan off like that until I've finished with you. I hoovered, hovered in the doorway, frowning and thinking of swans gliding away in the pond in the park. Then I mumbled. Sorry, Mum. Sorry, Mum. Because I knew she was angry. But she didn't hear me. I picked up the things she dropped. She yanked me into the house and slammed the door. That's Mrs Hooper's across the road peering out again. God only knows what the neighbour think. neighbours think. TV crews, police cars, I've just about had it. Gloria's gone mental, you two vanished. Have you any idea how I've been feeling? Cat laughed. 
She kicked the skirting board and hooted. The neighbours, she screeched, she doubled over. Typical grown-up crap. Her eyes went up an octave and she groaned. God only knows what the neighbours think. Is this all you care about, Mum? What the neighbours think? We've been trying to help, trying to find Salem, but you're not interested, are you? You don't want to know what we think, do you? All you care about is what the neighbours think. Salem might be dead for all you care. Mum stood eyeball to eyeball with Kat. I realised they were exactly the same height. Don't you dare say that. Don't you dare. Mum's hand darted up as if to hit Kat hard on the cheek, but it froze. About a centimetre off target, her voice trailed off. The temperature in the hallway seemed to plummet to minus 30 degrees. Kat stared at Mum, her eyes round. Go on, hit me, she hissed. Mum shook her head and I could see tears falling down from her cheek. Her hand fell to her side. I stepped forward. Mum? Kat? I said, but they paid no attention. Then Kat's lips started to wobble. She pushed Mum out of her way, wailing. I hate you, I hate you! She ran upstairs, tripping halfway. Hate you, hate you! A bedroom door slammed, then something upstairs crashed. It was a tornado touchdown time, or tea times three in our house. This is my way of describing what it's like when people have really bad arguments and it's the worst place to be in the whole world. Mum slumped on the bottom stair, head down in her hands. Her shoulders heaved and she made a strange noise. I'd never seen Mum like that before. Oh no, she moaned, rocking herself. Is there no end to this? I wasn't sure who she was still talking to and looked around. I was the only one there, which meant she was talking to either me or to God. Oh God, oh God, she said. So it was God, not me. I was free to go. I decided to check on the weather in the back garden. 